A natural outflow from when we've done our examination on the hip is of positions that help us move right into mobilization of hypermobile uh, joints. So we're going to take the leg to a 90 degree position to set. I can either come across my chest or a little bit over my shoulder if I need support. I'm going to bring, with permission, my hands close to the joint line as possible. As I come in and come in close to the joint and I anchor against that leg, then I'm going to move in a lateral and slightly upward pull, gradual, because of the st strength of this joint, you need to pull fully to a barrier if it's not too uncomfortable, and then you apply the force with your elbows close to your body. After pulling and getting some stretch in that, it's good to reset the joint back toward that, and you can get a sense of if there's excess motion that occurred or uh, if you did get some stretch. The second test or movement position that can come out of the exam is just distraction. Although this is a deep hip socket, you can be able to come above the ankle, get a hold of the leg, or a combination at below, above the knee if they have some knee ir irritation, and you can apply a long f distraction from that to just to unweight the cartilage of the hip, seeing if that gives pain relief or with a greater uh, to a greater degree coming to the barrier, you might find that you can give them a little bit of an overall stretch through that and relax. Those are two nice techniques. Alternatively, for those people that are working on somebody that's a lot larger than them or they need to have some physical help to do the pull on this very strong joint, belting can be very useful. Uh, this one's nice with the padding on it. So notice that it's around the hips on me such that it's not going to be above my, into my lumbar spine, creating some issues for me so I can push through my hip. It needs to be snug enough so that my force is going to be just using a pushing back with my hip motion to get that. This leaves me free to stabilize the other side, ASIS, as I'm doing this and pulling in that same lateral and slightly uh, upward distraction. As uh, we find that we can use the belt to help us for a lot of positions for the hip, extension is one of them. Notice that the position of the belt over across my shoulders and the such that it's not going to be putting any pressure on a therapist's neck is going to help me lift as well as if you have a gatch table, you can help start an initial position of extension so you have less range of motion you have to go through. This hand's going to be coming down and making sure that you're stabilizing just above the hip proper so that you can allow the extension but keep the pelvis more immobile. Hand underneath, some people can tolerate a little bit of bend of the knee. So I'm going to come underneath and just use my legs, which is the key, to provide the force that's going to create the extension mobilization. For those patients that are accepting more movement through the hip and getting a little more advanced three-dimensional position, a figure four or crawl position is a nice one to be able to come in to get some anterior glide. You bring the patient leg up such that you're not getting a lot of pelvic movement, set it to that position, stabilize through the pelvis, other hand, again, with permission, over their posterior hip region. You get tall so that you can provide the force through this lowering through the legs. That gives a nice anterior glide. Various grades of motion can be applied depending on how irritable they are.